Welcome into the In the Money podcast for Saturday, July 14th. Tom Leach along with Jim Goodman, England's Director of Wagering Development, as we take a look at the stakes-laden card up at Indiana Grand. It includes an all-stakes pick four, and then just outside that pick four is the Grade Three Indiana Derby. But, Jim, let's start with the fifth race that leads off the pick four. It's the Michael Schaefer Memorial for three-year-olds and up, going two turns at a mile and 70 yards. And Seeking the Soul is a big favorite in here, coming off a layoff. Uh, where did you land? Yeah, coming off the layoff, I think, is the key thing here. There's no way this is this horse's goal, so I can't imagine Dallas Stewart having him cranked for this. But having said that, he doesn't have to be cranked 100% to win this. So uh, when we talk about Dick Ford a few minutes, we'll certainly com- com- include him. Um, but at, at three to five morning line, which means he may go off at one to five, he's certainly not a bargain. So I looked at a uh, at another horse in here, uh, Pioneer Spirit to three, for Brad Cox and Florent Giroux, uh, obviously a very potent uh, combination running 31% this year. Um, he, he ran well at a similar level at Churchill Downs in, in uh, June at a $100,000 optional claimer, which is close to a list of stakes. And I think he's got a shot in here. Uh, Seeking the Soul is going to be a big favorite, but uh, I'm going to include the um, the three horse as well in my pick four. Um, can't, can't really stretch to see anything else in here. Looking at Lee, if he were to run back to his Kentucky Derby form from last year when he ran second in the Derby, but he hasn't been the same horse since then. So I think it's Seeking the Soul and Pioneer Spirit. Guess Sweet might have an outside shot for Neil Howard, but uh, exiting the same race as Pioneer Spirit really didn't have an ex- excuse. So I think Pioneer Spirit is a better price. So I'm going to take those two when we get to the pick four. Yeah, I'm uh same page you are. I thought that this was a shot where you could maybe beat a big favorite in here because of the layoff on Seeking the Soul, and this is probably just, uh, as you said, a, a step to something bigger. Maybe even be, may even be eyeing something like the Whitney with this horse, uh, uh, and so he could run well, but maybe you know still could get beat in a situation like this. So I'm going to try Pioneer Spirit too. I think that speed's dangerous. Cox is 29% second off this type of layoff. And this horse has a couple of buyers that are good enough to to match up to Seeking the Soul. So on his best day, Pioneer Spirit uh, would uh, would have a shot. So with the speed and the layoff of the big favorite, I'm going to try to beat him with Pioneer Spirit too. The only other horse I would throw in there, and this horse is, is entered in another race that we'll talk about later, a horse called Nonetheless. There's a seven in here. And the angle for me on this horse is this horse was claimed by the trainer who claimed Matru earlier this summer and really turned that horse around. And that was a horse that had some back class, like this one, and he claimed him and got a third-place position, nearly got second in the grade one, Stephen Foster. Uh, So just off the job that he did with Matru, I'm going to throw in nonetheless in uh, in this race as well and include him in a pick four. But there's one of these spots he's obviously going to scratch out of. The sixth is the Indiana General Assembly Distaff, it's uh, Phillies and Mares going a mile and a 16th on the turf. I thought this was uh, a, a spot where it was hard to, to get really high on any one horse. So I looked for a little bit of a price, and I went to Queen Caroline, the one horse, second off a layoff, two wins on this track, which I thought was a nice angle, and working well for Michael Matt. So I'm going to track Queen Caroline. I think Race Espa, the six, the four, lovely Bernadette uh, are certainly – the, the two to beat in here. I'm going to throw in Hachi as well. Uh, I get uh, first time for Brad Cox, and I get the, one of the top local jocks to ride. So uh, I'm going to throw in Hachi as well, but uh, on a tier below those those other three. How about you? I uh, I think lovely Burton S can be favored here. Uh, she got a, a, a great trip in the Mint Julep, came from uh, just about last and uh, ran him down the stretch. And I thought Resipsa actually was my favorite in that race and went off favored to two to one and she didn't get that kind of trip she was steadied into the first turn and never really got running i think she's going to bounce back here uh her back class may show in this race as well i, I would call it a toss-up between those two i would throw in lovely Lori, the uh, outside horse uh indiana grand one for one and happened to be this race last year so uh, the defending champion comes back uh she's not gotten back to that level this year looks like she's had a couple of uh, glitches in her training, but she had a good tune-up at the Lady Canterbury hundred thousand dollars stakes that might get her ready for this. So, looking for her to second back off the layoff to to run big. So, I'm gonna use those three with Lovely Bernadette being a very slight favorite. Rest episode would be very close if I was looking at a win bet. 
Seventh race is for the boys on the turf at that mile and the 16th dif- uh, distance. It's called the Warrior Veterans. Uh, where did you land here? I landed all of them here. <laughs> I've got a strong <laughs> opinion in in the eighth race, and I had some money to spend, so uh, I, I really don't have uh, a strong favorite. You got to look at Brad Cox's dot matrix for Giroux. Every every time you got those two, you got to include them. Uh, I can make a case for. Um, Fifth title for Ian Wilkes. I can make a case for CM Rip for CM Reap for uh, Ben Colebrook, the two. But there aren't a whole lot of horses I can toss here. If you look at their buyer figures, there, it's a lot of. It's the most evenly matched race I can see. So instead of taking five or six, I'm just going to hit the all button and hope to get a price here. So uh, if I had to pick one, I would probably stick with Brad Cox's horse, uh, My Barely, the five. Uh, also looks really good off that hundred thousand dollar stakes race at Canterbury. But uh, going to go with the all button. Yeah, I, I couldn't argue with that. I, I took uh, five in here when we get to the pick four. And Dot Matrix is my win pick. I think this horse is in career best form. I think this is a softer spot than he's caught in his last two, working well for Cox and Giroux. So I, I like this one in there. Uh, Mr. Barely, it looks like a, a much different horse in the two starts off the, the freshening. And uh, I ended up uh, using him last time up at Canterbury and, and uh, caught a nice exacta that night because – uh, the more I looked, I thought, boy, this horse looks like he's really improved after that layoff. If he could run back to that number that he ran at Indiana, I think it was an 88 buyer, and he improved on it. And so now he's coming back to Indiana. So I think he's really dangerous. I think fifth title at a price is uh, definitely interesting in here. CM Rep, uh, if that's how it's pronounced, uh, I'm going to include that one. And then this is the other spot where nonetheless is. So if he uh, goes here, I would include him on my ticket as well. Eighth race is the Grade Three Indiana Oaks. I suspect we're on the same one here. I couldn't get past Talk Vogue to me. The five, her last three buyers. This three-year-old filly is going a mile and a sixteenth, and her last three buyers are better than anybody's in here. The distance is the only question, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Um, Harbor Lights and Kelly's Humor. If you want to uh, use an exactas or uh, or try to beat her, those would be the ones. But I just couldn't make a case to to beat what's going to be a really heavy favorite here. How about you? Yeah, I would finish my pick four with a single. That's why I'm going all in the, in the leg before this. So uh, uh, don't think there's going to be any surprises here. There's no Monomoy girl here. And she ran within two links of Monomoy girl on the acorn. Uh, uh, well, unless she just doesn't like the track. Um, I, I can't imagine her losing this. Uh, if she did, I would I would use Kelly's humor uh, just because of Cox and Giroux. Again, so we sound like a broken record. Um, but uh, you've always got to include them. And uh, – that would be it. That's an easy one for me to handicap. Talk verb to me. This wraps up the All Stakes pick four. So let's take a look at that ticket now before we do the Indiana Derby. Uh, I started off with three horses, but one of them's nonetheless who might scratch. So two, three, seven in the first leg. Then I'm using one, four, six, eight, the four that I mentioned in the next one. Going the all five that I mentioned in the next one, which is uh, the one, two, five, eight, nine. And then I'll single talk vuv to me if you want to give yourself a shot at a price because nonetheless is going to scratch out of one of these spots uh that i've got on my ticket so you know steve asmussen's always dangerous and uh, big days so you could throw in harbor lights double the cost of the ticket and give you a, a shot to, to get a better pay but I, I really don't think they're going to be the, the big favorite in there the indiana oaks what's your pick four look like Okay, my pick four is uh, two, three in the first, seeking the soul and pioneer spirit, uh, using three horses in the second leg. Uh, the three horses I talked about, four, six, and nine, that'd be lovely Bernadette, Res Ipsa, and uh, lovely Lori Ree, uh, all button in the third leg, and back to talk verb to me, uh, the five horse in the last. And if I were going to, to do a $60 ticket, uh, Harbor Lights is a good option, but I would use Kelly's humor there. So my hor- my ticket is only $30, uh, two by three by 10 by 50 cents. So cheap ticket, but you got a strong single there. I don't know that you're going to get a huge price unless a bomb comes in the third leg. Yeah, I agree. Ninth race is the Great three Indiana Derby for three-year-olds going a mile and a 16th. And that's a nice field in here. Um, who did you land on? It's amazing. You took it. Look at these, um, uh, what you call minor derbies. Um, there's on on Twitter called the POTUS capper. He, he, he imitates uh, Donald Trump, and he said, "You mean Indiana has a derby? Yeah, they really do. It's a five hundred thousand dollars stakes race." And um, 
you always get the horses that have been running, you know, below the triple crown level, um, the three-year-olds, but there's always a few that are getting better this time of year. Um, King Zachary fits that profile, uh, was very impressive in the mat win, winning by four and three quarters. This horse took a while to get going, broke his maiden at Gulfstream easily back in March, but then flopped in the Wood Memorial, and that was really the only shot he had to get in the Derby. Um, so they went another route with him. Dale Romans really likes this horse, and uh, I think he's going to be a strong favorite in here. Um, I would, I don't know that I'd play him as a win bet at six to five. Uh, I think you got some other options in here. And uh, trigger warning, um, kind of an unknown trainer, Mike Rohn. I'm not really familiar with him, but this horse is running at Sunland, Presque Isle, and Thistledown, but got a lot of good numbers and uh, almost won the Ohio Derby three weeks ago. Ran behind Corbelis and Lone Sailor, who were Derby horses. So you got to consider him. Blame the rider ships over from California for Doug O'Neill. And um, Dark Vader ships from California for Peter Uten. And um, off a $150,000 stakes race at Belmont, uh, he went a little further east and almost won there. And, and he tried to get 500000 on the way back to the West Coast. Not a bad bet at all. Uh, title ready. Uh, ran well in the Ohio Derby and to get 12 to 1. That's a bargain on, on that horse. And if it rains, you can bet on Funny Duck, who won the Pat Day Mile on Derby Day at uh, 39 to 1. Um, but I think Indiana Grand uh, uh, looks like a decent weather for Saturday night. So if it's not a wet track, I would give the edge to King Zachary. But for a wind bet, I might look at Dark Vader or Trigger Warning. You've got uh, a triple crown in here. Yeah, King Zachary and uh, Funny Duck ran on Derby Day. Title Ready ran on Preakness Day. And Dark Vader, Vader ran on Belmont Day. <laughs> well. <laughs> Uh, and I ended up on King Zachary, too. Those days are pretty good races. Yes, they are. The 98 buyer in the Matt Wynn was just was a big jump, and I just think signaled that this horse had has made a move. He's a three, you can see three-year-olds make a big jump uh, suddenly like that, and it's uh, not anything they necessarily bounce off of. It just means they've improved, and I think that's what has happened with, with this horse. Uh, two sharp works since kind of backs that up. But uh, I'm like you, I think title ready at 12 to 1. I doubt we'll get that, but I think that horse is improving and is uh, certainly in the mix. Dark Vader at 8 to 1 is a player. And then uh, a couple of the California shippers, uh, Axel Rod and uh, Blame the Rider. Those trainers are dangerous when they ship, when they come across country for a spot like this. So um, I would definitely, if you're doing multi race wagers, um, I like King Zachary a lot, but uh, I think there are others in here that, that have a shot. So. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't necessarily single him, but King Zachary is going to be the win pick, and uh, you know you might play him in a in an exacta box with two or three of these others, and then if uh, somehow King Zachary say finished third, you'd get a really nice price on the other two because uh, I think there's just a notch below maybe King Zachary's current form is uh, basically most of the rest of the field. They're a well matched group. So a nice card up at Indiana Grand on Saturday. Of course, next week, Jim, we've got uh, Del Mar uh, starts on like, Wednesday, Saratoga on Friday, and um, uh, those are always uh, fun uh, racing uh, for the handicappers. And so folks will want to have their Keeneland Select accounts fully funded and get to the simulcast facilities to take advantage of uh, you know some races where you'll get some good prices because it's kind of like the Keeneland meet. There'll be loaded fields, right? Yeah, well, there's a little bit of lull between the Belmont Stakes and the opening of Saratoga and Del Mar, but you know, you, you'll you be looking at cards next Friday at, at Saratoga with 10 and 12 horses in every one of them. They've come from all different places. Uh, it's a great opportunity. It's tough handicapping, but when you get it right, you get paid. Good luck with your uh, wagers at uh, Indiana Grand or wherever else this Saturday, and then we'll be back next week to talk about, I'm sure, the uh, opening Saturday card at Saratoga. For the In the Money podcast from KeelanSelect.com.